Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and may I uh, offer a Happy New Year, as others in this House have done, uh, to colleagues on, of course, this side of the House, and uh, let's be in the spirit and to the other side of the House and all as well. Um, Mr. Speaker, a great speech by the Prime Minister uh, earlier today, um, an excellent speech, and by others uh, in this party. It's actually been quite distracting as one tries to write their own speech, uh, having to listen to such wonderful quality from colleagues and being distracted from it. Not that I'm going to blame about what's about to come next, but a great speech, Mr. Speaker, from the Prime Minister and others. And why, Mr. Speaker? Because it's a bold, strong start by national. A bold, strong start, which speaks to a confident government, a government confident on where it's come from and where it is going. And, Mr. Speaker, I find myself, if I'm a share my own little anecdotes, confident of where the year uh, is beginning. A year through now, um, and learning from that experience and stepping out, I would like to think, with that uh, confidence of a second year MP and enjoying over the last few weeks being out and about uh, in Tamaki, arguably uh, the finest place to spend one's uh, holidays. I'm sure my colleague Scott Simpson on the Coromandel would want to uh, disagree with. Uh, that maybe even who was now the former whip, uh, Dunedin, may be up there as well. But uh, fine enjoyment of uh, Tamaki. But the last few weeks, Mr. Speaker, have been a welcome opportunity uh, to engage once again with my constituents and to hear uh, their concerns. And their opportunities, though, begin, or rather, uh, they see and feel an optimism for this national government. Uh, the people of Tamaki, strangely enough, are very optimistic about what this government is doing. And they are worried about what the other lot will do. The opposition, be it Labour, Greens, New Zealand First, on the other side. Mr Speaker, what we have heard though today, what we've heard though today from the opposition is a lot of rhetoric. And there hasn't been a lot of evidence or facts to back it up. Mr Speaker, we're hearing from the opposition that this government is out of ideas that it has no plan, that it has no policies. We also hear from the opposition the same tired rhetoric which has been demonstrated by my colleague uh, Dr David Clark at the moment. The same tired rhetoric. A year in and hasn't got anything original. We'll have to get you a better press man. But what we're hearing, what we're hearing is this rhetoric. Out of ideas, they say, the government is. That we have no plan, no policies and nowhere to go. And, Mr Speaker, this is from the same people who say the government has done nothing over the last few years. Well, Mr Speaker, something doesn't quite stack up here. Uh, the, facts, the facts, Mr Speaker, tell us a different story. So you see, Mr Speaker, all the rhetoric aside, the facts are clear. This government has been busy from day one and has done a lot to build a brighter, stronger New Zealand. So let's look at the facts, Mr Speaker. Let's look at the facts, something I enjoy dealing with. I want to look at areas like education, health and justice. Mr Speaker, this is where we have come from since leaving the last Labour government behind. This and these facts that we're about to put out are just some of the pieces of work done by the National Party over the last four years. So, Mr Speaker, let's deal with the facts. Let's look at education. 70% of school leavers are achieving NCA Level 2. That's up from 65%, Mr Speaker, from 2008. More people getting NCA Level 2. That's a fact. 12,000, 12, Mr Speaker, more tertiary places, people in our universities and polytechs, opportunities for young Kiwis. Mr Speaker, 20 hours of free childhood education has been maintained for our youngest and most vulnerable. We've extended it to play centres in Kahangareo. Mr Speaker, we've put $60 million into um, the Positive Behaviour for Learning Action Plan to stop bullying in schools. Real facts, Mr Speaker. With student loans, with student loans, the cost of lending has fallen almost 18% in the last three years. Um, the costs have fallen from 47 cents in the dollar back in 2009 to 39 cents. And we're seeing that uh, student loan debtors are paying back an 11% increase in payments. Mr Speaker, these are facts. And we are lifting the profile, we just heard it in recent days through the Prime Minister's uh, speech, about apprenticeships. 10,000 new apprenticeships who enrol, or rather, apprentices who enrol after the 1st of April to get $1,000 towards their tools and on-job costs. 
and the same amount paid to employers. These are facts. These are real actions, real things which are happening. National standards. This government had the correct gumption to introduce national standards. And we know that the opposition opposed this. They oppose information. They oppose sharing it with other people. And I find it really weird because they often call themselves liberal, yet they hate the very idea that an individual might be allowed to access information and think for themselves. And Mr Speaker, within the broader area of education, we've developed the Callaghan Institute, this mechanism, this conduit, which I had the pleasure to sit on the select committee with, to assist research in moving into uh, industry and into innovation. These are facts, Mr Speaker, and all the rhetoric, the complaining, the obfuscation can't change them. We are better off now, Mr Speaker, than we were four years ago. We're smarter than we were than when Labor left office. Let's look at health. We just heard announced today an initial 2.6 million uh, funding for cochlear implants. People can hear better. Maybe that would maybe that would maybe that would help the opposition. Real facts, Mr. Speaker. Four hundred million dollars more for health spending this year, on top of 1.5 million in the past four years. 35,000 more elective operations, and 93 per cent, Mr. Speaker, of under two-year-olds fully immunised. That's 93%, still 7% to go, but you look at what was before, only 76% under a Labour government. Scandalous, but those are facts. And our finally, amongst other things in health, an immunisation programme for rheumatic fever. The other side wax lyrical about these issues, but this government acts and those are the facts. Um, our health system is better now than it was four years ago, and we are healthier than we were when Labour left office. Turning to justice, and I noticed the Justice Minister in front of me, so now I'm nervous. 600 more frontline police, Mr. Speaker. The lowest crime rate in 30 years. Law changes that protect the safety and privacy of jurors. Introducing public protection orders. And since 2008, only 4.8% of our prisoners are testing positive from drugs, down from 13%. And also, if I may be so bold, we've restored QCs. Congratulations, Christopher Finlayson. Um, a win there. This is great work that the Minister of Justice has done. The thin blue line is now thicker than ever, and we are safer than we were four years ago. Mr Speaker, this is only a sample of the accomplishments that this government has achieved, and there remain a huge range of activities to be done, from getting more Kiwis to use online services, to the improvements in welfare and defence, prime industries, conservation, transport, trade, not to mention all the great work that's going on in Christchurch. Mr Speaker, this government is about action. It has been from day one, since the day it won the Treasury benches, every day since, and tends to be for every day moving forward in this term and into the next election. But in uh, the absence of any real plans from the other side, all we're hearing uh, from Labor is wanting to be hands-on. And Mr Speaker, you've got to actually ask yourself the question, what does this actually mean? Does it mean that their hands will be on your wallet? Does it mean that their hands will be on the throat of New Zealand industry? Of course it does, Mr Speaker. One only needs to look at the last nine long years. Fleecing the taxpayers and strangling industry. And Mr Speaker, we cannot go back to that. Mr Speaker, ordinary Kiwis know what a Labour government means by being hands-on. It's a punch in the guts and it's a slap in the face. Mr Speaker, Labour should keep its hands to itself. Mr Speaker, they have no vision, they have no direction, they have empty rhetoric and they will not uh, accede and accept the facts of what this government is doing. Instead, tiresome slogans, tiresome slogans of wanting to be hands on. And I repeat what I had mentioned earlier, sir. They want to fleece the taxpayers. They want to get into those uh, wallets. They want to strangle industry and hold it back. It's a punch in the guts to the ordinary New Zealanders and a slap in the face. And New Zealanders will not stand for it. We heard today in the Prime Minister's statement and in which he tabled a strong, bold, continuing vision for this country. And all of us who stand here in this House on the government benches are stand uh, proudly behind the Prime Minister and all the ministers. Uh, our hands are out, they are transparent, they are strong and ready and continuing to work for New Zealanders. Mr Speaker, the facts have been spoken. This government is happily in control and working for the betterment of all New Zealanders.
Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me begin by wishing you.